Well, good morning. It's great to see everybody here. It's been a great uh, set of discussions this morning. So I really do want to thank Danny and the others at Food Tank and a big congratulations to them. For those of you who follow Food Tank, you all know that even as great as this event is, their overall work is, is just uh, splendid. And so very, I'm very grateful for their work and uh, very grateful to be here today. I also want to point out, this is the International Year of Soils. So happy International Year of Soils. As a soil scientist, I love to, I love to see the attention put on soils. Uh, but of course, it's not just about soils. As uh, Leo, Aldo Leopold pointed out over 65 years ago in his book, Sound, Sand County Almanac, uh, land is not just soils. It's a great fountain of energy running through a circuit of soils, plants, and animals. Now, prior to agriculture, natural ecosystems captured sun, used the nutrients in the soil, used water to create the energy that animals used to create their flesh and bones and tissue. The animals defecated and died and and return those nutrients roughly back to the same system. So a pr that circuit that Aldo Leopold spoke about was pretty tight and it was pretty closed. Now, with agriculture, we've really changed that, and that's had repercussions throughout the entire circuit. And of course, as we've heard, the circuit doesn't just include soils and plants and the farmers, who are now the main animals on the farming landscapes, but also the consumers, the farm workers, and others. Unfortunately, with agriculture, we now have mostly open and non-functioning circuits in which energy is harvested from the crops, transported off the farm, sent to oftentimes distant urban landscapes, and many people along the way uh, are left impoverished, struggling to get enough food, and coping with uh, degrading environments. Agriculture often results in land degradation that outpaces land restoration. And that's important to remember because our bones, tissues, the nutrients that form our bodies and those of our children essentially come from the soil itself, phosphorus, magnesium, potassium, sulfur. Those are soil-based. Now, the differences between natural ecosystems and our agricultural systems are really exhibited underground. So this is a wonderful, one of my favorite plants in the world. It's Indian grass from the tall grass prairie region, now nearly extinct uh, in North America. But it was one of the types of plants that provide the regulation of those energy circuits Leopold spoke about. And it's underground that really is the big story. How does it manage nutrients, water, and soil underneath? <laughs> this, is, this is the Ecosphere's safety net. Elegant micromanager of nutrients and water. And it's helping close those circuits and make sure in, ensuring that nutrients are recycled back into the system, that there's plenty of, of food for the animals, and so on. So in contrast, so this is a perennial. It comes back every year, regrows. Anytime there's available water, available nutrients, temperatures are warm enough, it springs into action. Really serves as a regulator of that energy circuit. In contrast, if we go out to a, a cornfield, uh, in nearby Maryland or Iowa or roughly anywhere in, anywhere in temperate regions around the world right now, this is what you find. There's no living cover. There's no roots providing a safety net. That circuit is broken. And it has to be reestablished each year by farmers at great expense to themselves and to the environment. Vast areas of land are exposed to soil erosion nutrient depletion, and so on. And that's kind of the, the story of agriculture that we constantly need to improve upon. Now, this reality puts a tremendous burden on the true stewards of the planet, the farmers, and especially the millions of smallholder farmers in developing countries that actually produce 
most of the food that human civilizations rely on. Now, um, we replace a few elements in some cases, but again, in general, agriculture degrades land faster than it regenerates it. <clears throat> now, just as farmers are facing uh, the challenge of increasing productivity, some, some people put our need for increased productivity at 70%, some at 100%, but a growing population will obviously require a bit more additional food. They have to produce more food facing the uncertainties of climate change, facing greater competition for land and water resources from that growing population, and they have to do so relying on the thinnest soils, the most nutrient depleted soils that farmers have ever had to work with in human history. Pretty huge task. Now, you know, oftentimes people don't relate these problems of soil to themselves, and certainly those in this room, we're well buffered against this. But we have to remember, more than 90% of human calories and nutrients come from these land-based farms. And if people in places go hungry, problems arise. As Bob Marley put it, very simply, a hungry man is an angry man. So this is about global justice, and it's about global peace, as well as the environment. Now, of course, as I mentioned, many of us aren't going to go hungry. And I often hear that if we put all of our food together, there would be more than enough to feed the entire planet. Well, that might be true, but food security is a regional and local issue. Huge corn yields in Iowa don't guarantee that a farmer in Malawi is able to produce enough for her family or sell enough to buy food. And huge corn yields in Iowa don't guarantee that a mother in Washington, D.C. has access to nutritious foods in her neighborhood. So it gets complicated very quickly. And, and, and to put our arms around these complex issues that involve land, water, soil, and of course the complexity of, of humanity uh, brings up great challenges. Now, our focus for this panel is to push for better research and policy that can address these issues. I'm going to raise three areas that I think that we can bring in and, and address, and I think, some of the, I think these three issues will be addressed. Number one, a more participatory system that serves and supports both farmers and citizens. Farmers too often have to trade off between, choose between long-term soil and land health versus producing enough in the short term. They need better tools, better management systems that they don't have to make that trade-off. I've advocated for a long term, for a long time, the develop, for the development of perennial versions of the major grain crops that would make this corn system function much more like this natural ecosystem that I talked about. Consumers too though, and, and the farm workers out there in the fields, Policies need to be put in place so that families don't have to choose between health and economic income or uh, basic survival. The second issue is addressing food losses after harvest. This is two different issues largely between developing countries and the developed countries. In developing countries, we need to ensure, help ensure that harvests make it to market in good shape. In the developed countries, I think we need some policies to address how can we capture some of the food bought by consumers that could be used in, in neighborhoods for those in need rather than wasted. Number three, climate change. I think President Obama put it the best on Monday night, no challenge poses greater threats to future generations than climate change. Farmers, in particular, are facing this great challenge. Critical research and policies are needed to find the triple wins of producing enough food, reducing greenhouse gas emissions from agriculture, and adapting to climate change. Now, I'm going to put a fourth on board that we probably won't get to discuss, but I think it should be on the radar in the future. 
we need to find alternatives to domesticated crop production. As climate change hits, as the extinction of our fellow species on the planet, we're looking at by the end of the century, uh, this being a very lonely planet packed with 10 billion people with no space for lions, tigers, eagles, for the oceans, fishes, and so on. I think we need to start envisioning reducing our cropland by half and reducing the impact of agriculture on that cropland by half. So rather than end by saying peace, I'll just end by saying soils. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>